Recovery efforts are underway in parts of the south after a massive tornado ripped through communities over the weekend. More than 20 people were killed in the state of Mississippi and dozens more are battling injuries. Over half of those killed were in the small town of Rolling Fork. As for Omar Villafranca is joining us now this morning. Good morning, Omar. Good morning. Cleanup continues here in Rolling Fork. On that side of the street, homes are going to be demolished. And on this side, businesses are trying to clean up the mess, kind of like what you see behind me, these two 18-wheelers that are stacked on each other. Residents that we talked to say that they had problems making ends meet even before this disaster struck. The devastation goes on for miles as the memories are piled up into heaps. Days after the powerful tornado touched down, residents are still looking for anything worth saving in the debris. Can't put it to words. This is unbelievable. Jeremy Grayson was out getting food when the twister tore through his block. I ran back here. What did you expect to see? I was expecting to see a house, but I, I couldn't see nothing. What did you hear? Cries out for help. You can hear it echoing. All the way through. All the way through. Grayson has lived here for his entire life. It was forgotten about before. This is basically the most attention that we didn't had in our lives. Are you worried that the state and other people are going to forget about you here and you're not going to be able to rebuild? That's a feeling shared by others in Rolling Fork. How can we rebuild something and we don't have nothing to build our foundation with? We need help. Rolling Fork is located in Sharkey County, Mississippi, where 35% of the population lives below the poverty line. It's among the poorest counties in the state, which itself has almost 20% of its population below the poverty line. There's a, a real lack of jobs around in the area. But Grayson says the community will still rebuild. The life is still here. The community is still here. It's just the material things that are gone. Grayson said that he did get an alert on his phone, but he did not hear sirens. And that's because emergency officials tell us the tornado formed so fast, they didn't have time to activate the sirens. Amory? Yeah, you know, Omar, yesterday we spoke to like a storm chaser who was out there, and he said the tornado was moving basically at the same pace as a fast-moving car barreling down a highway. So you can see how people would have just run out of time. Um, it's been labeled an EF4. Yeah. What exactly does that mean? I mean, we're talking winds up to 170 miles an hour, and it's interesting the differences you start to see covering enough of these between an EF3 and an EF4. Uh, we were in uh, Silver City, Mississippi, and the damage there obviously was terrible. Homes destroyed, uh, trees knocked over. But then you come over here where this area was, is an EF4, and the trees, they're missing bark. Uh, there's things embedded in the trees. The damage is a little bit more severe for solid structures, brick uh, brick buildings, things with foundations, mm -hmm. and that's where you start to see. EF4s are pretty rare. Um, I mean, they do happen, but they're pretty rare. This is the strongest storm in the state of Mississippi in three years. And you mentioned everything about the storm moving fast that the storm tracker t uh, told you. Keep in mind, this happened at night mm. when it was dark, even more frightening. Um, you mentioned in your piece that this tornado hit a particularly impoverished area of, of Mississippi. Uh, yeah. When I hear that, I think there's got to be additional challenges. I wonder if people, you know, have insurance or if you're a renter um, and, you, you know, you don't have insurance at all. I mean, what sort of additional challenges does this, this, does this introduce? Well, a lot of the folks that we've been talking to, they did have insurance, but, but a lot of people don't have that pad. Mm. They're going to have to out of pocket pay for a hotel or some place to stay. Um, and hopefully they can get some of that money back. These are people who work. Well, they can't go work right now if the work is destroyed. Um, it's not only homes that, that, were, that were damaged here, but there's businesses behind us that they're gone. So employees who'd be regularly be showing up to work on Saturday morning after it happened, they don't have work to go to. That is, is a type of things that starts adding up, and, and that forms anxiety. Yeah. Um, you have people also that are just, at this point, missing the basic things, too. Clothes, toiletries, basic things that uh, now groups are coming in to help them with. Well, at least they are getting some help. Uh, something is better than nothing. Omar, thank you very much.